Welcome to worship this evening. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Opening hymn for this evening on this uh, observance and celebration of the Lutheran Reformation is hymn number 862, 862. <laughs> page 3 in our worship bulletin, the bottom of page 3, as we join together in the confession of our sins, focusing on Romans chapter 3 as we uh, observe Reformation. The Apostle Paul reminds us of the two main teachings of the Bible, the law and the gospel, and the Holy Spirit shows us the purpose of each. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, and that's all of us and everybody else. So that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. There is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Let us join in confessing our sins to God. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. The Apostle Paul also continues, But now a righteousness from God, apart from law, has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Christ Jesus to all who believe, and are justified or declared not guilty freely by his grace, through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. You are forgiven of all of your sins through your Lord Jesus Christ. Believe, trust, and put your confidence in these words of God, for he has so declared it, that you are holy in his sight. You are a saint in God's eyes through faith in Christ Jesus. We continue with the song response. <laughs>
join in the response of introit and then continue with the singing of the Gloria Patri. God is our refuge and strength. And ever present help in trouble. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by observing the law. 
Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. But now a righteousness from God, apart from law, has been made known to which the, the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Christ Jesus to all who believe, have trust, have confidence. There is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. He did this to demonstrate his justice, because in his forbearance, he left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time, so as to be just, and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Where then is boasting? It is excluded. On what principle? On that of observing the law? No, but on that of faith. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith, apart from observing the law. Here ends our epistle lesson. We're going to turn to our sermon hymn for this evening, and the hymn is chosen both for the um, sermon text, but also as our confession of faith as we focus on Jesus, his Lord, our Lord, and his work in saving us from our sins. So we turn to hymn number 510. <laughs>
mercy and peace be to you from God our Heavenly Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. The text for our meditation this evening, again as we observe the Lutheran Reformation, is our Gospel lesson recorded in the 8th chapter of John's Gospel beginning at the 31st verse. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, or if you remain in my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants, and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. And that uh, word sins is keeps on sinning. It's a habitual practice. So everybody who keeps on, keeps on sinning is a slave to sin. Now a slave no ha has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. These are the words of our Lord. In the name of our Savior, dear Christian friends, I suppose as we get older, uh, sitting in a car for a long time, hours at a time, maybe a 14-hour drive, would we say that's something as we get older we would like to do? Sit in a car all day and then maybe do it again the next day. Maybe try to drive out to California or uh, Southwest or someplace. Sometimes uh, if someone wants to travel, the only way to get there is maybe airplane. And uh, when I had the opportunity to uh, visit Japan, uh, we were on the one flight for over 16 hours. So it was kind of a nice thing to get off the plane. But the people who were going on to the Philippines had been on the plane since Boston to Chicago to Japan and were going to be on that plane for over 36 hours. They couldn't get off once. Now that's travel. And sometimes when people get off the plane, they say, I'm glad to get out of this tin can. Imagine if you've ever had an, a chance to see a replica of the one of the slave trading ships. Uh, for a while there, all the slaves were given this little cubicle that they lied in and were chained to for two to three months to, for the trip over. And the trip was so harrowing for these slaves from Africa that a high percentage of them died on the trip over. So imagine, for the great majority of the time of two or three months, you had to be chained. And then when you got over, now you're going to be a slave pretty much the rest of your life. Um, you and I, in America, we, we we are so many years past what once a his, was a historical stain or blot on our nation, but it seems to still be affecting us in various ways. And so using a little bit of those thoughts uh, for Jesus' words to us this evening as we observe the Lutheran Reformation. And the Lord reminds us tonight, Jesus the Son tells us the truth. Jesus the Son of God tells us the truth. And in the first part, he tells us the truth about sin. Sometimes that we kind of forget about and that unbelievers don't even think of. And then in the second part, he reminds us, he tells us the truth about how we are made free. And it's through him and especially through his holy word, which guides us and saves us today. Now, Jesus, in trying to impress this upon his disciples, those who believed in him, he says, if you remain in the word of mine, so if you hold to my teaching, literally in the Greek, if you remain in the word of mine, which I gave you, you are really, you are truly, you are actually my disciples. And then, something important, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Now, they reacted to that in a very abrupt way and manner, and kind of spoke almost flying off the handle. 
And they reacted to that by saying, we've never been slaves of anybody. How can you say you'll set us free? How can you say you'll give us freedom? And then he has the absolute statement here, which speaks the truth about sin. I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins habitually, everyone who is continuing to do a sin, is a slave to sin. And in the King James, this is one of those verses where Jesus would start out by saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you. And literally in the Greek, Amen, Amen, I am telling you that everybody who continues to keep doing a sin is a slave to the sin. Now, the people here uh, kind of flew off the handle and said, we've never been slaves to ever, anyone. Now, personally, if they're speaking about themselves, okay, they're technically correct. But as they said, we're Abraham's children, and we have never been slaves of anyone, which kind of speaks against their historical history. The Israelites were slaves for hundreds of years down in Egypt. And then, uh, historically, the nation of Israel was taken as exiles, many of them slaves, into Assyria, into Babylon, and then were under the hands of the Romans. And they can't honestly say, but in the heat of the argument, they say, we've never been slaves of anyone. But Jesus brings it down to a spiritual level. And so he reminds us that if a person is caught habitually doing a sin, they are a slave to that sin. And I suppose it would be easy for us as believers today to say kind of the same reaction, the gut reaction. Well, I'm not a slave to any sin. And we have to be careful. The apostle reminded us, if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. We can look at the life of King David, and we say, how did he fall so far, so quickly? Did he wake up someday and say, I think I'm going to commit this sin, and live in it for about a year? And, and so the Bible reminds us, are there any sins that own us? Are there any sins that own us? That prod us and then we give in to them? And the Bible constantly says, this should not be, you are not to be motivated, controlled by sin. And yet, every single day, if we look around us, people around the world voluntarily offer themselves and their bodies and their lives to sin. I don't think if any of those slave ships were moored off of Africa, I don't think anybody voluntarily walked up to them and said, hey, take me as a slave, shove me in one of those cubicles, and make me make that long trek and then sell me into slavery in America or Britain or wherever. And yet again, notice how every day, as Jesus says, people voluntarily give themselves over to whatever the sin may be so that the sin may control them and they are slaves of sin. So for you and I today too, uh, it's a reminder, be very careful. Sin shall not be your master, the Bible says. Now, there's a difference in what Jesus is teaching here between falling into a temptation or remaining in the temptation and habitually doing it. And I hope you can see the difference. Uh, Jesus told his disciples, watch and pray so that you do not fall into temptation. Or that, as the Bible says, it takes you unawares. Kind of like it took, took King David unawares. So, Jesus reminds us, watch and pray. And thank goodness that as we observe the Lutheran Reformation tonight, 
We have also good news from Jesus and words of freedom from his own lips, from him as our Savior from sin. So Jesus also teaches us the truth about him and his word and what it has done for each and every one of us. It has freed us. As he proclaims to us this freedom from sin, notice that in our own nation, notice that there was a massive step that was taken, or steps if you want to call it that way. You had the Emancipation Proclamation, massive, huge political uh, step that was taken. And the whole Civil War, massive, huge political step that was taken, which could have been lost. And one of the main purposes was to end the evil, as it was spoken of back then, of slavery in our nation. Jesus here reminds us that to end the slavery of human beings to sin, and they're being slaves to not only the sin itself, but also to the penalties, to the guilt and the shame, to the eternal damnation that it brings. Jesus stepped in and was a slave on our behalf, and slave for us. And through that he could say, if the Son sets you free. But it took, as we sang in the hymn, him being nailed to that cross. Him shedding his own blood, him being buried into the tomb after dying for us all. And after he slaved for us, he gives us freedom. He gives us freedom from all of our sins. He gives us freedom from being controlled by the sin in our everyday lives. He gives us freedom from the eternal penalty of the sins that we have committed. And he has given us freedom and makes us a part of the family. You know, Martin Luther knew what it was like to be caught in this vicious cycle of sin and not knowing how to get out of it. He knew the wickedness of the guilt and the shame that could just weigh upon a person. He knew God's law, but it took him a long time until revealed to him by the Holy Spirit through his forced studies in the scriptures to find out how Christ did freedom. And it's interesting to note that our epistle lesson taken from the book of Romans, the book of Romans is what opened his eyes finally through the Holy Spirit to the freedom that he had in Christ. That changed everything. <clears throat> changed his whole life. Technically it changed the whole world as God used this one man and many other reformers, not just Luther, but many others. So that today you and I can celebrate 500 years ago what God brought about. What 2,000 years ago, more importantly, God brought about through Jesus. So this gospel uh, reminds us that this Jesus voluntarily walked up to that cross and gave him life for us there. But he came back triumphantly, and in the same way he reminds us tonight, if the Son has set you free, you will be free indeed. We get to walk away scot-free, guilt-free, clean conscience, knowing we're loved by God, and we're in our Heavenly Father's house. And because of Jesus, we have another place that's being prepared for us where we'll really be free. Right now, we're saint and sinner at the same time because God's called us to faith, but we're still plagued by that sinful human nature and by the temptations all around us. And at times, too, in this Christian church, we're going to be attacked. Attacked in various ways and in various times. By the unbelieving world, by the devil, and even at times by our own sinful flesh, rearing its ugly head against our faith. But there's a time when God is going to free us from all this and bring us safely to his heavenly kingdom. So as we are able to celebrate this wonderful reformation, and the freedom it has brought through faith in Christ Jesus. Continue to share this with others who don't yet know this freedom. To those who are possibly still stuck in slavery to sin. And who need forgiveness and freedom too from it. 
and continued as a freed child of God to support the work of the church, to support the work of Christ and his holy word. And finally, remain where you're at, Jesus says to all of us. Remain in my word. And then he says, it's interesting. He says in the Greek, remain in my word, and then you'll know the truth. So by remaining in the word of Christ, we know the truth as the object of what he has revealed to us. And then he turns it around, and he makes the truth the subject, and he says, the truth will set you free. And it has. So let this same fact of what Jesus has done for us be done for many or others around us until we stand in the glories of heaven. And there, you're freed from your sinful nature, you're freed from temptation, you're freed from a guilty conscience for all eternity. And where are we going to be? But in our Heavenly Father's, our Dad's house forever. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep and guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. For our hymn after the sermon tonight, we turn to hymn 863, 863, the, the um, hymn of the Reformation.
hearts together in prayer. Lord Jesus, on this Reformation week, we thank you sincerely for what you have done for us in freeing us from our own sins, the guilt, the burden, and the weight of them, and lifted them upon yourself, and by your wounds we have been healed. Help us then to remain, to remain in your word, to remain in the truth that has set us free, until that time when by your grace we receive all those things you have promised us. We ask this in your holy name. You who have also then taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We now turn to the middle of page 8 in our worship bulletin as we join together in the Reformation Litany of Thanksgiving with the hymn verse uh, there after the first part of the prayer. O God the Father, fountain and source of all goodness, we thank you on this observance of the Lutheran Reformation as we join with fellow believers throughout the world and rejoice in that the darkness of false teaching has been dispelled by the bright and shining truth of your word. Hear us, O Lord, as we express our thanks in song to you. unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. For our closing hymn this evening, we turn to hymn 640, God's Word is Our Great Heritage.
Virgil, welcome to everyone this evening. Glad to have you with us. God's blessings. Have a good week. And uh, enjoy the weather, hopefully. Thanks.